close your eyes. I want to stay in this moment just for a second because I believe that this is the greatest battle that we face is our will against the Lord's will. Like our opinions, our prepend disposition, our attitudes, our experiences, our likes and dislikes. Create this battle between us and the Father of us trying to push our will onto Him. We say things like this. We say words like not our will, but yours. We say it. We know it. And yet it is a daily battle of our hearts surrendering. Like really honestly believing in your heart going, I truly do surrender will. Not, not your will be done, but I'd like you to do this. I think that this is the way it should be. This is that daily battle. This is that daily thing that leads to disappointment, confusion, frustration. saying this morning I was getting ready and I was asking the Lord, you know, what he was wanting to say and um, I felt impressed that he said that he wants the prophetic to be over the preference and the, the prophetic, it might sound scary to some, but it's just hearing what the Lord has to say and we can hear that in his word we can read that in his word, he can also speak that to us and so um, one thing that he's been talking to me about is when I have a strong reaction, an emotional reaction that doesn't bring peace, I'm probably walking in my preference. And so this morning, I think he is wanting to do some shifting and adjusting in our preferences and allowing that his will to be over our will, the prophetic, what he says, to be over our preferences. And so this morning as we stay in this, if you just ask the Lord, show me, Lord, show me where I put my preferences over your will, where I've put my preferences over listening to your voice. And this, as you go through each day, when you feel a strong re emotional reaction, a negative reaction in something, or like a control or a manipulation or a oh, frustration, you're probably putting, and we all do it, putting that preference over to stop and be like, but I repent, I repent for that, and I need to hear what you have to say in this situation. Not my will, but yours be done in this situation. So maybe take a moment and ask the Lord where that's out of line. And just take a moment to repent. He's such a good Father. There's no condemnation, no shame. God, thank you that your will is so much better. It is perfect. You have good plans for us. Every situation we walk into, your heart is to bring good out of it. Beauty for ashes. We 
we surrender our will this morning and we say, Jesus, we only want your will, not our way. We want your will, not our way. Your way, not our way. Jesus, yeah. your, way is, your way is perfect. Your way is peace. Your way is life. Your way is joy. So we thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this moment right now. Father, I thank you for the time that we have together, and I just ask that you would speak now. Pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 All right, so if you're going to title, if you're going to put a title to today, if you're taking notes today, then it's Tag Your It. We've been studying, we've been looking at prayer, the concept of prayer, the thought of prayer. And um, today I'm going to do some teaching on just the practicality of prayer. And last week I opened up five prayers and gave you guys five prayers that challenged you to consider every single day, praying each one. We did that as a church. I got on Facebook. If you're on Facebook, you know, I did a live and we posted it on social media just a reminder of what it was for that day. And then we went in and my, my goal in my heart is that you would take those five and apply those to your life every single day. That it wouldn't just be one of them, but it would be all five of them, right? And I, I did that, I, I wanted to start there, I felt like we were supposed to start there, is an understanding of putting a, a biblical foundation of prayer inside of you. But it, it wasn't to become self-centered or self-focused in that it's all about you, but rather that if your prayer life internally with you and the Father, your relationship grows, what happens then is that what is going on the inside begins to shift to the outside. Right? And so that is the starting point. And today I want to, I'm going to move us towards um, some, just some teaching on that. Right? Because individually, individually our purpose is to grow our relationship with the Father and become more like Jesus. But corporately, we are to walk in boldness from an increased personal relationship with the Father and looking more like Jesus. It opens the door to what we are called to be to the world. Right? So we start with us, and then it comes out. It goes out. And uh, we're going to start in Exodus 3.10. Exodus 3.10. This is the Lord talking to, to uh, Moses. And he said, Now go, for I am sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people, Israel, out of Egypt. God is this, this declared moment. God is saying, I'm sending you, Moses, to my people. I choose you. Right? So they're God's people. But we have a part in it. Right? God has, it's God's people, he has a plan, he has a purpose, and yet we are directly connected to the plan. I think sometimes we forget that. I, I believe that there's this, this thought process that happens around us where God just has a plan, he's going to do whatever he wants, and we just hope that we kind of connect to it. But I do believe that God's saying the same thing to us as he said to Moses. Moses said, you lead my people out of Egypt. And I do believe that God is calling us to lead people out of their Egypt. Right? Because this is the reality. If you go prior to verse 10, if you go back a few verses, what you will see the Father saying is that I see their oppression. I see their harsh slave master. I am aware of their suffering. Like he's saying, I've actually come down to earth, I've come from heaven to earth, and I see it. I'm aware. But then God goes, tag, you're it. And, and that's what he's calling us to do. I believe that is this, this as we move forward, is the understanding is, tag, you're it. And some of you are like, I can barely handle my life without leading someone else out of Egypt. Like, I can barely get myself out of Egypt. 
And the reality is, is that as you're going out, we're supposed to take people with us. Right? And the purpose of this is, is to bring change to our world. It's to bring change. First of all, it starts with us. Bring change to ourselves. But we're called to bring change to our world. And I wrote it down like this. I think that so many times we're asking God to do what he's calling us to do. I'll repeat that. I think so many times we're asking God to do what he's calling us to do. Right? Because all around it, I think a lot of times we, we have this conversation with the Lord, with the Father, and we're like, don't you see what's going on? He's like, yes, I see it. And I'm calling you to do something about it. I'm calling you to get in the middle of it. I'm calling you to, to lead the people out of Egypt, out of their oppression, out of their slavery, out of their misery. You're going to go. I, I heard this said a long, long, long time ago, and it really, it took a long time to connect with me, but I heard, without God, we cannot, but without man, he will not. Without God, he, we cannot, but without man, he will not. And I know for some of you that is messing with you right now because you have this thought concept that God's going to do whatever he wants to do, and if you're not willing to do it, he'll go to someone else. The reality is, is there's a partial truth to that, but the bigger truth is, is there are more other people that need you to step up to the plate. Right? It's not down to one person to serve a thousand, it's one to one. That's our personal relationship with the Father calls us into relationship with people where we see someone, we partner with them, and we go, I'm, I'm here to help lead you out of Egypt. And we stop, and because we do what Moses did. Moses was like, I can't do that, I can't do this, I can't speak, I can't, we have all these excuses. And the reality is, is you're right, you can't. Because without the Father, you can't. But without us, you won't. And, I, and this really reminds me, I, I really, I, I thought about starting with some games today, because I feel like this is youth ministry all over again. I had a really good game picked out for you guys, but we decided, I decided against it. And the reason why I say that is because when we're in youth ministry, right, we, we, we use these words, we're like, you have a purpose, you have a destiny, you have a calling. And I've been in youth ministry, Michelle and I have been in youth ministry for a long time, and we have some now that are much older, and they are raising kids of their own, and, and I'll have these conversations, and they're like, man, I remember when you said this, and, and, and now I'm just like, well, I guess it didn't happen. Right? And I'm like, no, because without you, God won't. You haven't missed it. You're not too late. Maybe you got distracted, but the reality is, is you always have a destiny. Your destiny has become more like Jesus. You always have a purpose and a calling. That is to, to love on people, love God, love people, and serve people, and lead them out of their Egypt. You didn't miss it. You haven't missed it. You're not going to miss it. Unless you just absolutely say to the Father, I refuse to do it. That's going to be tough. So let's talk about your call, right? Matthew 5, Jesus says you're salt and life. You're salt and light. You're salt and light. Right? You're salt. This is who you are in the world. This is who you are. You are salt and light in the world. So let's, let's talk about that a little bit. What is salt? So new salt brings preservation. It helps people to taste and see the goodness of God to experience who God is. I want to say it that way, to experience who God is. Because I think a lot of times it sounds really spiritual and religious to say, to taste and see the goodness of God. And some of you are like, I don't even know if I understand what the goodness of God tastes like. But the truth of that is, is, is to experience who God is. And then he says that you're light. Well, what is light, right? You bring understanding, you bring wisdom, you, you bring the word, you bring faith, and you bring illumination. You illuminate things. I know that sometimes on Sunday mornings, 
um, there are things for, uh, from the Word of God that I would bring to the table, and I can tell there are some people like, oh, should you be saying that on a Sunday morning? That, that might be offensive. I, I, you can see it on their face sometimes. You can see it. And, and the reality is, is this. Absolutely. I have to bring illumination to where their darkness is. That's right. right? This is the reality. It's not going to get ignored by not addressing it. I mean, it's just the, that's just the truth of the matter, right? Sometimes turning on the light, you can see stuff you didn't see before. And that's my role to you, so that as you go out, that's your role to the people. It's, it's not uh, just a couple of us to bring a change into our community, to bring a change into our environment, uh, our workplace, wherever it is. It's not just on the couple, it's on all of us. If you said yes to Jesus and you're like, you're the Lord of my life, I'll do whatever you ask me to do. You just signed up and said, I'm ready to be salt and light to the world around me. I'm ready to bring change. And the first time we hit a little bit of roadblock, we're like, no, 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 God, you do it. And he's like, without you, how am I going to? How is this going to happen? What God is going to do, He's going to do through us. Period. It's just going to be done through us. We see what's going on in our world. We see what's going on in our community. We see what's going on in our family and friends. And we are called to be a part of the change. We actually have the ability through the Father to bring change everywhere we go. The reality is this. If we do it through the Father, it brings positive change. Most of the time if we do it through our own flesh, it, brings, it does not always bring good change. Sometimes it's coupled with offense, wounding. The truth of the matter is the church is the change. Like the church is the platform, the church is the body, the church is the place where change starts and happens. I wrote this down, the church is God's plan A, there is no plan B. You are the church, you are plan A. And then I would venture to say somewhere like, but I don't want to be plan A. I might fail, yeah. But it's not failure, it's learning. It's how we learn. Let him, that would not go so well. Right? So what God will do on earth, he will do through us. And, and as the Lord was, as we were talking, he says, yeah, I want you to spend some time on prayer. The reality of this is, is that through this series, I want to build your faith. Your, your trust in yourself. That your prayer life, you feel confident and bold in. As I think that the church, I'm going to say church as capital C, has really relinquished individuality um, um, responsibility, individual responsibility, and has coupled it to, well, they're the intercessors, or they're on the ministry, the prayer team, or, or they're the pastor, they're the leader, and, and it's... it's them, as a follower of Jesus, your prayer life is powerful and important if we understand what we're doing. So that's why I want to do a little bit of teaching, right? What God is going to do through our lives will be birthed in prayer. It's born in the Spirit, right? This is not about um, that the principle of like, this is what Corey said to do. I'm going to try it and hopefully it works. That is not the point of this. Right? It's in prayer that we give birth to the realities that are on the inside of us. In our prayers, we begin to see what's going on inside, what, what the Father is doing inside of us, the realities of who we are. And they come alive. Paul said, I am like a mother groaning in childbirth 
that Christ would be formed in you. That happens in the Spirit. Last week I was talking about that this is not through head knowledge, this is going to be through spirit knowledge. So how is God going to change our community? How will God change our community? I'll give you the answer. He's going to change us. He's going to change us. And the, and the next question is, is, how is he going to change us? He's going to do it in his presence through prayer. In his presence through prayer. Right? I believe we're called to be a, a praying church, a church of faith, a church that believes God. And I believe that God is inviting us to some things as we move forward. So last week, I, we took a look at Acts 12, 5. I want to look at it again. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. There is no purpose and there is no power in your life apart from prayer. Think about that one for a second. I had to think about that one. When I wrote it down, I had to think, do I really believe that? But the truth is, is I can operate on my own skill set. I can operate on my, own, on, on my own head knowledge and my experiences and can achieve some things. But real power, connected to real purpose, is through prayer. A um, long, long time ago, I came across a guy had said, prayer is the difference between the best you can do and the best God can do. I thought that was a really good statement. That was a revelation to me. Because I remember kind of thinking, well, why do I need to pray? Because God already knows and he's going to do what he's going to do. Why? Why? The reality is because there's desires in my heart, there's things that I want to, I feel like we're called to do or we're going to do, and so I've got to press in and pray about it because I can do something, but I want God's best. Yeah. Not, just, not just my best, I want God's best. Not just my mediocre, I want God's best. Prayer is the delineation between our power and God's power. Prayer honors God, and because of that, God honors prayer. Why would I make a statement like that? Because prayer is our conversation building a relationship with the Father, not about what the outcome is. Yeah. And most of the time, prayer is focused on a need and something specific and intentional that we need to see an outcome to. Prayer is about building that daily relationship with the Father where we're just talking. We're just having this conversation, just like you do with your spouse or your friends, where you're just talking, and through this conversation, you catch little nuggets and little things, and you're like, well, I didn't know about that about you. I would have never thought that. That's, that's wild. And that's what our prayer life is. That's what our, when I was talking about last week, right, our individual prayer time with the Father that leads to what we do as corporate church. Prayer does not appeal to God's reluctance, but lays hold of his willingness. Right? Like, I'm not twisting God's arm. I'm not trying to change uh, his mind, and I'm not turning God's heart. That is not the purpose of prayer. But I think sometimes we think that, right? We actually come into the, we come into that, that zone with the Father of like, I'm here to plead, to change your mind. I'm going to twist your arm. I'm going to convince you. I've got seven good points, maybe ten, to change your mind. Instead, it's to connect with what the Father's doing. Hey, Father, can we talk for a minute? Yeah, I know. You need some insight here. Because this is what I'm feeling, this is what I'm seeing, this is what I'm thinking. But we say this, 
not my will, but your will. Jesus told me to pray, not my will, but your will. And so I need to connect with your will in this, and I'm not trying to judge. So I'm not appealing to his reluctance, right? I'm not appealing to that reluctance. I'm laying hold of his willingness. I'm grasping a hold of his willingness. Our prayer time is not to find out what he's hesitant about. It's I need to understand what you're willing, Father. Where is your willingness? I want to connect to your willingness. The reason why I say that is because if you look through the Gospels, if you look through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all about Jesus' life, the prayer that was spoken to Jesus, if you are willing, they would say that if that was their prayer to them, if you are willing. And there was not one time he was like, yeah, I'm not willing. I'm just not feeling it today. Their prayer was to connect with Jesus. With what is the will of the Father through Jesus? What is the will of the Father through Jesus? You're, you are Jesus. You're here. Understand why you're here. You're bringing healing and you're bringing redemption. Are you willing? And he would say, I'm willing and I'm willing and I'm willing. Right? In prayer, we're laying hold, we're grasping a hold of his willingness. And so submit my will to his willingness. In that ability to submit my will to his willingness, I receive from heaven. It's through Jesus. It's through Jesus, right? So that is, this is the power of prayer. This is the power of a praying church. This is the power of a praying parent. This is the power of a praying spouse. That's the power of prayer. Right? The praying church has to lay hold of his willingness. Now, I have a whole lot of points to cover. I know last week I did five. Today I'm only doing one. But I feel like that's what we're going to do. Like the Lord said, just do this one. Just do this one. So here it is. When the church prays, we pray in the name of Jesus. I want to make sure that we understand that. We pray in the name of Jesus. That's where power and authority comes from. Let me give you some scripture to go along with that. John 14, 13 and 14. Jesus said, you can ask for anything in my name. Right? So you're like, what should I pray about? What can I pray about? Anything. According to the word of God. He says, you can ask for anything in my name. So if you're like, I don't know if I should pray about that. That's, if it's in anything, you can pray about it. Mm -hmm. But remember, the purpose of the prayer is not to twist God's arm. It's to lay hold of his willingness in that matter, in that situation. Right? So he says, uh, you can ask for anything in my name and I will do it. Yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Now that does not mean we pray out of our own desires, out of our own flesh, right? What it does mean is I'm going to pray and get a hold, I'm going to lay hold of, I'm going to grasp a hold of His will in my prayer time. That's the purpose. Jesus said pray about anything. So that means I can pray about it. But if I'm going to pray about it, I have to have the right heart. It's not about what I want, it's about what God wants. Right? And I say it that way because... I'm going to lay a hold of his will, his willingness, from the word of God. Not my opinions, not my thought processes, not, not my feelings, not my emotions, but from the word of God. What does the word of God say about the matter? That is how you can ask for anything and receive. If, you're, if, if what you're asking doesn't line up there, if your expectation for what you're receiving doesn't line up with the Word of God, you are not going to receive. And then we walk away from those moments and go, well, God doesn't answer prayers. He doesn't hear prayers. No, that's not true. God doesn't do opposite or contradict His Word. That's an amen right there. Amen. Okay, just make sure. 
keep them where it's going. All right. John 16, let's keep going with some scripture. John 16, 23 and 24. At that time, you won't need to ask me for anything. So he's talking to the disciples here, right? And he's like, you've been talking to me, but you're not really going to do that anymore. I've been with you, I've been walking with you, you've been talking to me, and I've been going to the Father, but here's where we're going to switch this up a little bit. You're, you're not going to do it that way anymore. He goes on to say, I tell you the truth, you're going to ask the Father directly, and He will grant your request, because you use my name. You're going to be a name dropper in the Spirit. Right? You're going to drop my name, and it's going to give you access to the Father. When I speak the name of Jesus, when I pray the name of Jesus, I'm literally using the power of eternity. Right? I'm speaking as if he was here because he gave me the right to use his name. You understand? Jesus gave us the right to use his name. Scripture, right? So, um, when I pray in the name of Jesus, right? When I'm praying the will of God in the name of Jesus, awesome things happen. Sometimes they don't look awesome, sometimes they feel awesome. If I pray to the Father in my name, Nothing awesome is going to happen. It's just not going to happen. It's not going. To, it's not the way it's designed, right? Will of the Father through the name of Jesus. Awesome things happen. Period. So let's let's take this just real quickly. Um, the name Jesus is not a magic word. It's not an abracadabra. It's not an incantation. All right? It's a declaration of my dependence on God. In the name of Jesus is this declaration of my dependence on you, Father. It's an absolute. God, I can't do this without you. I need your name. It's a recognition of your position and your placement. Where is our placement? 1 John 4.17 As he is, so we are in this world. As he is, so are we in this world. So how is Jesus? Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. The Bible says that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. How is Jesus? Well, he's not poor. He's not in fear. He's not sick. He's not bound. He's not addicted. Right? As he is, so are we in the world. Not as he was, not as he will be, right? But as Jesus is right now. As he is right now, that's how we are in the world. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. So are we in this world, right? Not as that we will be in heaven. Not when we get there. According to scripture, we're seated in the heavenlies with Christ. So if he's at the right hand of the Father, through him, we operate the same. So how do, why say that? Because I believe that when we understand that, it, it changes our prayers from this prayer of shame or guilt or condemnation, right? We don't pray with fear. Instead, we pray from the understanding of our position. And who we're praying through. The reality is, if I go to the Father and if I was to try to pray in my name, He would be like, Well, let's talk about Monday. And while we're at it, let's talk about Tuesday and let's talk about Wednesday. And He's going he's gonna to be like, We're going to even talk about some things. And then He's going to say, You're immediately, automatically disqualified. You're disqualified. 
According to Philippians, my righteousness, right, is like filthy rags. And, and you can Google this if you want, but I'm going to tell you, filthy rags are it's not rags covered in mud. It's not good. It's not good, right? So I don't go to the Father in my name because my name will not give me access to a perfect God. So when I come to the Father in the name of Jesus, what I'm doing, I'm coming to um, His righteousness, in His name, in His holiness, in His redemption, and in His blood. That's the position, by coming to the Father in the name of Jesus, that's the position that we're coming under. Actually, what we're doing is we're coming hiding behind the name of Jesus. We're hiding behind the name of Jesus, right? So that's how we come confidently and boldly. Because I'm not coming with, with my history, the things that I've done. I'm coming with what Jesus has done. I'm coming with what Jesus has done. That's what you say, amen. Amen. Just going to make sure you guys are awake. Proverbs 18.10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. A righteous man runs into it and is safe. The name of the Lord is a place. It's a place. Think about this. When the father looked at Moses, right? And he said, if you see my glory, you'll die. Let me hide you in this rock. And I love it because when we talk about this, it's like children's ministry. You're like, what's the rock? Everybody's going to get it right. Because Jesus is always the right answer, right? He's, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. Yep. It's the rock. He hides us in the rock, right? So according to his word, Moses couldn't see him live. I, I can't see him, but if he hides me in the rock, then I can see him. Then I can see what's going on, right? So I come boldly to the Father, right? We come to the altar. We come in this, this mindset of boldness in the name of Jesus. According to your word, I've been given authority to come into your presence, hidden under the rock, hidden under Jesus. And now I'm, I'm connecting with the will of the Father. I'm connecting with what you want to do. And I'm in agreement with your will, and I'm asking it to be done. Asking it to be done. So I'm going to cover one thing just real quickly, and we're moving to something else. Because I've, I've been, there's been these times where I've been having conversations with someone, and someone's like, "So do I pray to the Father? Do I pray to Jesus? Do I pray to the Holy Spirit?" Well, honestly, yes. All of it, right? But I, I think that sometimes there's a, a concept in prayer that helps position us in understanding so that we stay in the right mode, right? And um, it's like, I don't, I don't want to make it a pattern. I don't, I don't, want, to, I don't want to make this a, like a religiosity type thing. But I think that sometimes we have to understand, I pray to the Father in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Right? I pray to the Father in the name of Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. I think that if, if we can keep that in our mindset, it helps position us who is really doing the work. Who is really the one that operates in the power and authority? Whose will am I lining up with? The Father's will. And Jesus said through his name because he sees it through the right hand of the Father. And that gives me access to the Father. And the Holy Spirit is here to make sure that my prayers get to Jesus. The Holy Spirit has got to be tired going back and forth. <laughs> he has got to be in shape, man. Yep. Right? Pray to the Father in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. All right, so listen, don't get caught up in the, like, Corey said we have to do it this way. You, you pray to the Father, pray to Jesus, pray to the Holy Spirit. I just want to make sure you stay lined up with where power and authority is, whose will, whose name, who's doing the work. 
right? I love that because at the end of the day, the reason why we pray that way is to make sure we get hid behind Jesus. We want to make sure that we position ourselves in the right place so that it doesn't come on us. Someone look at us and go, man, what kind of power do you have? I have the power of the Holy Spirit and the name of Jesus and the will of God. That's what I have. Right? So I pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. And, and I love it because I feel like in my mind when I put this together, I felt like this like boom. It instantly, as soon as I do that, it puts me behind Jesus. Like I feel like it, it, in my mind it positions me physically, it positions me where I'm supposed to be. And I want to make sure that I'm supposed to be where I'm supposed to be. So here's what we're going to do. First we're going to take offering, or I'm not offering, and I haven't said that in a long time. <laughs> we already did the take offering, you guys are faithful givers. We're going to do communion, and then we're going to pray. We're going to pray. Yeah, I believe that when we bring a word, there are times when we need to exercise that word. with a mindset of the works of Jesus. A body that was broken, and a blood that was spilled. So that daily we can yield to your will. And through the power and authority that Jesus has given us, we can see change in us and our world. And we give thanks for that. We, we say thank you. And so we take your body and we remember. And we take the blood. Bye. 
behind you. We still have room for people to sign up with the kiddos. We still have room in Rewoven if you want to come tonight. Cornerstone Inn, 6 o'clock. Let's close out. Father, we just bless you. We thank you. Father, I thank you for your word. Your word brings life. It brings direction. And it connects us to your will. So, Father, I ask right now that as we leave, this word would sink into our hearts. It would sink deep into our minds. Father, that we would, through our prayer life, individually, would bring impact and change corporately, not only to ourselves, but to those around us. As we grasp a hold of your will, please, grasp a hold of your will, that we would operate in its fullness. We love you, we bless you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Oh, I just have to give you a The second Friday of every month, we are doing a encounter night, a encountering the Holy Spirit. And so that will be the 14th. I need you to mark your calendar. It goes on in, in Dee's place. We meet in the uh, in the meeting room, which is the basement, but it's a nice place to meet. But I really want to encourage anybody that's saying, hey, there, there's got to be more. I want more. We don't know what's going to happen, but we know it, it is going to happen. So you are invited. Repeat after me. October 14th, Friday night. Okay, mark it on your calendars. You are invited. Consider yourself cordially invited. Okay, thank you. Here we go. Dee Dee is at 7 o'clock on Friday night, 7 o'clock. Dee Dee. Dee Dee. 7 o'clock, 7 p.m., 7 p.m., okay, blessings.